Hi and welcome to a CDH Chaos Tournament gameplay video. In this match we have Rocco, Tumnacrom, Rogsai and Kadina. This tournament is hosted by Chaos, the Pantheon series. And the next potential tournament to sign up for is in May the 5th. The starting player Rocco is playing the typical Rocco stuff. We have Food Chain, Squeedy Mortal, together with the Food Chain, Threesonous Ogre, Kikijiki Mirror Breaker, together with the Felida Guardian. It's a promo card version, so you might not recognize the art. Second in turn order, Tremnek, playing Tumna and Krom. Adding Delny Streetwise Lookout, that synergizes greatly with Tumna and Esper Sentinel, Fairy Mastermind, Orcish Bowmaster, and Lofo, and such. And then Adnos, and obviously, of course, Underworld Breach and Brain Freeze and Lion's Eye Diamond. Smothering Tide is something you don't always see inside Tumna Krom builds, but here it is. Third in third order is Duke Niner playing Rograk and Silias. A turbo build focused around Ad Nauseum. Obviously, of course, Underworld Breach, but he's also including Necropotence Package together with Final Fortune and Born Upon a Wind. He is also playing Last Chance, a different version of Final Fortune, except it's in sorcery speed, so it won't work with Necropotence, but still a pretty good card in general. Last in turn order, Rajix with Kadina. This is a morph build. You're basically putting creatures into play face down for free and you get to draw cards from that and then you flip them up for various different effects. You're usually winning with Hullbreaker Horror, basically casting infinite morph cards to draw out your entire decklist and then win with something like a clean Phasus Oracle victory. And with that, let's start this match. Rocco sending free cards to the bottom of his library after mulliganing. A gemstone caverns from the last player in the turn order, and then the game starts. Savannah into Tinderwall, and then passing the turn. Tim and Krom plays an Esper Sentinel, and then passes the turn. Command Tower, and then play Rograk. Kadena plays a land, and a Graf Digger's Cage, paying for the Esper Sentinel. Turn 2, and Rocco draws a card for turn. Strangely, no effects as he's passing the turn to Ignasi, Timnacrom, also known as Tremnek. I'm guessing that Grafdigger's Cage has an effect. Windswept Heath as a land drop. Rograk and Silias is casting a Vamp Tutor, not paying for the Esper Sentinel. Losing to life and searching his library. Putting the card on top, and then drawing the card for turn. Playing a Mana Crypt, not paying for Esper Sentinel. And then play a Mystic Remora. And then he passes and Cadena draws a card for turn, plays a land, and a clone creature, entering the battlefield as a Esper Sentinel, not paying for Mystic Remora. And then Rocco starts his turn free, playing a Stomping Ground, untapped, losing free life, and then passes the turn to Tumna's turn free, who sacrificed the Windswept Heath in the end step. Rocco is clearly not having a good game here. But Grafdigger's Cage is a very key stacks effect against that commander completely. Timnacrom finds Scrubland with the Windswept Heath, and then draws a card for turn, playing a Misty Rainforest, sacrificing it, and casting Birgi, God of Storytelling, while searching out and finding Volcanic Island. Attacks with Esper Sentinel at Rograxilias, and then passing the turn. He pays for Mystic Remora and don't lose any life to the Mana Crypt flip. However, he doesn't do anything else and passes the turn to Kadena who draws a card for turn. Kadena plays a land and then cast the commander and then plays a face down creature for free, not paying any mana for it whatsoever, using the commander's ability. And then draws a card because of the secondary ability. Whenever a face down creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. I think this is the first time I ever see someone actually play with gloves, but I guess it's cold. Rocco is sacrificing the Tinder Wall on his turn for two red mana. And then for two more, a Faberow Elder. And then he pass. Timna Weaver is playing a Spire of Industry land drop, pays three mana to cast Timna the Weaver. Attacks with both of his creatures to draw two cards with his commander. As he attacked two different players, he attacked Rocco with his Burgi and Esper Sentinel at Rograk and Silas. Then he passes the turn discarding to hand size. No damage from the mana crypt, and he Rograx Silias pays for the Mystic Remora and draws a card for turn. Costs a Dark Ritual, giving a card draw to both Esper Sentinel, the real one, and the cloned one. He gains free black mana, I love those tokens, and then costs a Windfall, saving one black mana floating. 
In response, the Tymnacrom is casting Cooling the Weak, sacrificing his Esper Sentinel, gaining a red mana and four black mana. Now, if the Windfall resolves and he draws into Adnos, then you have the mana for it. This is also giving a card draw to the Mystic Remora, increasing the hand size for Rograxilias from five to six. And, well, it's still in response to the Windfall he's actually casting at Nos. If I'm gonna be honest, this is a little bit of a weird play, but sure. He gains a red mana from Birgi, but that's all the mana he's gonna have post Nos, and then we are going to Windfall after his Nos. Uh, in response, we're sacrificing a mountain by casting Thunderclap. This is a red instant that you can cast without paying any mana for it if you sacrifice a mountain, which he did, to basically Lightning Bolt, dealing free damage to something. This is gonna potentially kill Birgi. Normally, Rocco is using Thunderclap to kill Academy Rector or Arena Rector. And Birgi is killed. Adnos now resolves with two red mana floating. That's a Chromox, that's a Smothering Tight. Honestly, I have no real idea what he's actually going for here. I'm guessing that somehow he's going to try to cast Bone Upon a Wind, try to win above the Windfall, or honestly, I don't really know. Because if he actually doesn't do anything with his hand here, he's literally going to pass turn, let the Windfall resolve, and then discarding his entire hand and make everyone draw equal to the amount that this guy is ad right now. On the other hand, he could also find a counterspell against the Windfall and uh, keep his hand and, uh, yeah, continue the game as it is. But it is still kind of a risky play considering he only has Tumna as a blocker and there are a bunch of attackers. We have a Faberow Elder, we have a Morph creature and then we have a 2-4 that could be coming swinging at him. And currently he's down to 6 life and now 4. So he's dead to attackers because Tumna will block one of the creatures and then two other creatures will go into his face and he will die. So I guess his only out now is to basically just keep digging with Adnos until he finds Born Upon a Wind and some way to actually cause Born Upon a Wind, which is really tricky from this position. Another alternative is that he's finding creature removal and can be a prevent attackers from coming at him. Like a lightning bolt will currently make him survive here. He stops at that, four life remaining and picks up all the cards to his hand. I think I saw Born Upon a Wind in his hand, actually. From all the Mystic Remora triggers, Rograxilias currently has 11 cards in his hand. He started at 5 cards when, bef when he casted Windfall. And crazy enough, Windfall actually resolves and everyone gets to discard their hands. And we have to count the cards in the post Adnos player's hand to see how many we draw into. And everyone gets to draw 22 cards to their hands. Yeah. And as a reminder, we are currently at Rograk Silia's turn, who has one black mana floating. If I'm gonna be honest, I feel a little bit skeptic about that Adnos execution. I think he should have casted it in his main phase, or simply just let it resolve without let the windfall resolve without casting Adnos. Post all of this, we're playing an Ancient Tomb as a land drop, followed up with a Mana Vault, floating one colorless mana. I think I accidentally saw a Tainted Pact in his hand as he's looking in a Mox uh, Diamond, an Underworld Breach, I can see. You gotta be very careful when you're looking through your hand on the spell table when you're playing tournaments. You can clearly see that you're kind of seeing a Tainted Pact there. He casts Mox Amber. Then an arcane signet, gotta convert that colorless mana into colored mana. Now we did see a tainted pact, so if he has Fasas Oracle, or the mana to tutor for Fasas Oracle, he could potentially try to win the game right here. Or, well, that kinda does it. This is Warrior's Oath. For two red mana, he will take an extra turn after this one. He will actually die post this turn, but uh, he's clearly trying to untap all of his cards and uh, regain mana to potentially win next turn. He has to discard the hand size, but he can sculpt a very strong 7 that should be able to win the game. This is kinda risky considering that people basically have 22 cards each in their hand and a ton of potential counterspells, both from the Sultai Cadena player and the Tumna and Krom player. But if it pays out, he has a clear victory. 
So there's currently a bunch of table talk on how to properly deal with this. There are two different potential options. Either you let it resolve so that you can try to fight him during his next turn where he has to discard down to hand size from 22 cards down to 7. This means that if you stop him on his next turn, he is out of the game. That's a very big value play. However, he will also untap all of his lands and probably keep a bunch of counter spells, which means that he will probably be able to fight off the two players who have the color identity of blue, as they don't really have that many ma many lands untapped. So the more safer play might be to counterspell it now, so we don't have to deal with it. However, they actually go through the motions, revealing cards that they have in their hand. As you can see, Tremnik has a Force of Will and a Red Blast, but he isn't able to actually cast it, because he's apparently lacking other cards. So in Rogsai's hand, he has the Tainted Pact, as you can see, and he is revealing capacity to find things with his Undable Breach, Imperial Seal, etc. So without going through the necessary steps, they are explaining the process and figure out a way to solve the victory. There is a Solemnity in Rocco's capacity, but Solemnity actually doesn't really do much because post Fasa's Oracle, uh, the ETB trigger have already been placed on the stack. So Rogzai, Silias. Seeker Adept Gerixis wins the match. From a windfall that was uh, fueled with an Adnos into a Warrior's Oath.